Uh, yes, actually, not with twins. But that is the, the muon experiment, which will wait till Wednesday. So, so if you're going fast enough, you can age yourself. If, you're, if I travel fast enough, I won't age as much as people who aren't traveling as fast as I am. Does this tie into the, if you're traveling faster than the speed of light, you're technically going back in time? Yeah, well. <laughs> so the whole, you know, if you're in a car driving the speed of light, you turn your headlights on, what would happen? Well, you've already broken a law of physics there, so uh, how many more laws are you allowed to break? So if you travel faster than the speed of light, um, so yeah, that by our standards, it would seem to be backwards in time. I would claim that we need to redefine time. But there is a, high, a theoretical particle called the tachyon, which travels faster than the speed of light. Because ultimately, if V equals C, then I get zero in the denominator, and the math people hate that. Only because they haven't figured out how to do it. <laughs> So the math is dictating that nothing, that no object with mass, as it turns out, can go the speed of light. So tachyons are particles that are traveling faster than the speed of light. All the math says is that it can't go less than. It's a, it's a barrier. So if you start out less than, you can't get above it. If you start out above it, you can't go below it. But by our current definitions of time, if I shot you with a tachyon gun, you would be hit by the tachyon before I pulled the trigger. So. Now, do they exist? It's a theorist who has come up with some interesting stuff to get published. Uh, do we have, I'm not even sure we have anything even remotely close to a test to see if it exists or not. But it's one of those things the theorists do, you throw it up against the wall, see if it sticks. Uh, if we ever find tachyons or figure out how to test for them, this guy would be here with his genius. Uh, and if not, his theory will end up on the dustbin of history along with so many other theories. Well, sorry, I didn't expect to hear so many terms I watched in a flash. <laughs> yeah, um, there was one, uh, a colleague of mine uh, when I was in grad school, who's now a professor in Georgia, uh, his first doctoral dissertation, he said, what I wasn't told when I started was that there's a 1% chance of a Nobel Prize, 99% chance it was just pure crap. And it turned out to be pure crap. So. Ah, uh, well. On that note, uh, lab tomorrow, I'm not going to post. It's going to be a sort of a free form. Well, actually, it depends on what I find, because the I need, we had three pieces of equipment, and I found one, so I need to find the other two. Uh, if not, I'll try to figure out a plan B. Is this lab going to have to do with Einstein? No. If you did. No, that's going to be the following week. Okay, then the following week, I will dress up as Einstein. <laughs> I will get a zero for sure here. Sure. Awesome sauce. Uh, it, it's more of a, well, we'll wait till we get there. Anyway, the lab tomorrow ideally is going to be, I'm going to give you an RLC circuit, and you are to figure out what the inductance is for the inductor. Oh, so what we did last week. There was no inductor in it. But adding the inductor. Yeah. Did, did we not have the inductor then, or did we just want to do it without? Didn't want to do it with it. Wanted to do it without. Oops. At some point, I'm going to buy a detector or a meter that will actually measure inductance. But until then, 